Hello, Semper Squad, and welcome back to Semper Admin, your go-to resource for mastering administrative tasks. In today's video, we'll be covering how to use the Naval Letter Format Generator to create properly formatted correspondence to reduce the rework and any type of corrections. So you might be dealing with this if you're trying to draft official correspondence and you're not really good at the formatting that's needed to make sure that these are done the correctly the first time because you're having a lot of delays and you have a lot of corrections. You want to avoid those things to make sure that we're getting these things up to higher headquarters as soon as possible. It's also a great training tool for your Marines if you want to show them examples or ways to use tools to help streamline their processes. But ultimately, this is going to also help you if you have any time sensitive things, you don't have the time to go back and forth and need it done now. Great tool to make sure that we get it done right the first time. So what we have here is I have a jacked up correspondence here. It's missing the seal. It doesn't have the correct alignment and something that you might just find in your share drive. What we're going to do is we're going to pull that over here into the naval letter generator and we're going to see how this form actually works. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to grab a file name. And just for example, I'm going to use this subject here and that's going to be my file name. And as you can see, it is limited to how many characters you can put in here. I can't put as long as I want. So you can see it did cut me off to that point. And that's just good to know when you're looking with this. The second thing we're going to look at is that addressed information. This is what's at the header of your unit. So you're going to have each line that you have here. Here is going to bring you to the RUC MCC table, which is where you can see all the units and all their codes to include their official name. If you do not know what your official name is, that's what you would use. But I'm just going to use this as an example for today. So I'm going to put that in there. Put this over here. And then I'm going to grab this last one. And there is no punctuation in the header. OK, now we have all those in there just for a review. Here it's going to talk about that SSIC that you have here. Now here again is going to link you to the SSIC manual if you're not sure what SSIC to use. But today we're just going to use 1500 as it shows here. We're going to come over here and add in the originator code, which is going to be this code here. And then we have our date and it's telling us the order that we want to do our date in. And that's what it would look like there. Now we're going to come in here and start looking at the header information. So what we're going to see here is that we have a from person and a to. So the from is going to be this person here. The to is going to be this person here. And then down here is going to be that subject. Now, if you notice, this is in uh, natural caps and it says always do all caps. So I'm just going to make this all caps. And it's giving me that little reminder for formatting that we have there. Now here it gives me the option if I want to have a via line, meaning is there somebody else between the from and the to that needs to review this or endorse it. So we already have a video on what vias are, but that's what you can have here. And then you can add multiple vias depending on what the situation is. But I'm just going to have one via for today. It's going to ask you, do you have any references? And when you have references, it's going to tell you what you need to do for that information. So it's saying that they need to be in all caps and we're going to have that reference there. And then I'm going to add a secondary reference here. So I see that I have that. And then do I have any enclosures? And I do have enclosures for this one. Enclosure there. I'm going to add a different enclosure here. And now I have that. Now let's get to talk, start talking about the bodies. What you're going to see is that you have the body paragraph and then you're going to have sub paragraphs. So you, it only allows you to go down to sub paragraph three. So one is going to be the main one, two, three. So if I come in here, I'm going to take this is going to be my main paragraph here and I'm going to have a secondary main paragraph here. So this is going to be main paragraph one. This is also going to be main paragraph one for that one. And then again, these ones down here, I had already clicked. But by default, this is what you would be looking at here. So just show you that one. I want to add another paragraph. That's also going to be one. I'm going to add another paragraph. But now this is going to be sub paragraph to what I'm looking for. And it looks like I need to add that paragraph. Sub paragraph two. 
as you see there. And I'm gonna add another paragraph. And note that these are always coming back up to one. So you have to make sure that you're selecting the proper sub paragraph that you're looking for. Because now that I have this one, these are going to be sub paragraph three going to that third drill down that we had. So I had that. I'm going to add another one, making sure that this is three. And then this one here, I'm going to add another paragraph, making sure that this is three. Then it's going to come down here um, to the next piece. So I'm going to have another sub paragraph two. And all we're doing is we're creating this whole document on with this here. So that's going to be a level one paragraph because that's all the way at the basic numbers. And we have that. So that is all of our paragraphs just copied and pasted over. Now it's going to ask me if I have a signature. That's what it's talking about here. That's that first, middle, last that we have there. And then at the bottom, it's going to ask us if we have copy twos. This copy two is what you would see in the bottom left hand corner of anybody who needs a copy of this document. So as I come here, I can add that information as you can see. And then once that's done, we're just going to hit click to generate document. And this is going to give you a download to open. So let's give this a second to open. And we're going to look at this document and compare it to our actual one that we had. So now we have this document, as you can see, has been reformatted properly compared to what we had. So as you can see here, we have the right date. The alignment looks good. Everything is in the same order that we provided it as you go through. And a couple things I want you to see is like these are still lowercase. This is because that is exactly what we provided to it. So whatever we provide is what it's going to spit out. But what this thing does here is it does give you all those things aligned the way that you need it. So some really good stuff when we're looking over this entire document. So a couple things um, before we wrap it up, I just want to point out a few common mistakes. Always verify the SSIC and the originator code that you're using with these things. And again, make sure that you're always providing the correct references in the way that it's telling you. Make sure if it says all caps, use all caps. Check your punctuation and stuff because it's not going to spell check for you. It's only going to format it for you the way that you need. And always proofread uh, that generate a document carefully because you want to make sure that nothing got mixed up. It's a computer. Make sure it's doing it right so that you're having everything that you need the way that you need it. To quickly recap, today we covered using the Naval Level Format Generator, including the file name, address configuration, header information, reply box setup, operational items in the selection, the body composition, the closing block completion, and the document generation. Remember, mastering these administrative tasks will help you become more of an efficient and effective Marine. Well, that's it for today's video. If you found this content helpful or if you've learned anything, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Semper Admin for more instructional videos on the Marine Corps administrative duties. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for a future topic. But until next time, stay motivated and Semper Fi.